G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to use my crushed velvet mold again and last time I did the chameleon powders and I said to you I wanted to do um, pastels similar to that bowl that I did the other day with the wavy top. So I'm going to do purple and this is this little piggy enchantment and I'm going to do blue called blue eyes and I don't have this little piggy in the pale pink I've only got like a fluoro pink and I, I didn't want to have something that bright so we're going Arteza uh, bubble bath and then the, this little piggy lemon sorbet so those are my colors now I did a little test one because you know how last if you saw my other video you'll know what I'm talking about I didn't get the resin into the into the little lip enough um, and I should have gone round with my little tool but I didn't I just poured it in and hoped for the best but you know lesson learned I learned the hard way that you do need to try and get um, the resin into the little groove so I'm, I'm only going to do two there's no I don't need to do four I'm just doing a little tutorial for you so I'm just going to do these two um, now this and, and it worked really well I did a little test piece Ta-da! Look at that. So this is what I'm going to try and recreate with, for you today. Um, I did a little bit too much yellow and then there wasn't very much room left for the purple so I'm going to see if I can do a little bit better with that. Maybe go half and then two colours on that half and then two colours on that half. But um, yeah, and, I, and then I just put um, a white marker over the top instead of black and that's how it turned out. And look at my sides. There's not one little bubble. I did so well with it. So, yeah, I'm going to do that today and hopefully we can get the same result. So, here we go. I'll start with the dusting. I'll start, well, I'll keep this one here for reference, like that. So, I'm going to start with the pink. And I'll just use a little makeup brush and I'll get a piece of paper towel ready so that I can wipe my brush after each colour. Oh gosh, look at that. I've already spilt yellow. It's just as well that section's kind of be yellow. It must be leaking. All right, so here we go with the pink. I'll do one um, and then I'll just do the other one off camera or I'll speed it up for you. Either way, so half. And then this side will be pink, like so. It's not difficult to do, it's a little bit time consuming, but I think it's quite relaxing. You can put some music on, you can put your favourite TV show on, you can watch a movie, just whatever you want to do, whatever's relaxing for you. And just do some dusting, like so. And then what I will do is put a little bit in there. I'll just push it in there so that the the sides match. You can see there's pink there, blue, purple, yellow. So it matches on the sides like so. A little bit in there. I should do the pink on. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just wipe. <laughs> okay, we'll go yellow next. Still not exactly the shade of pink that I want, but I don't have any others. The others I've all got, like, they're either too bright or they're too red or... Now this one needs to go around here. Um, yeah, well, they're, they're just too too dark. And then I had another one, but it was too light. <laughs> like Goldilocks. It's just not right. I should see if the um, this little piggy range has got a, a pale baby pink for me. So try and do your sides as well if you want the sides to to be coloured like that. Okie dokes. Get in there. Do the sides. So if you didn't see my last Crush Velvet video, uh, you wouldn't know that this mould, you can do everything basically in, in the mould. You don't need to... Oops, blue next. 
Um, you don't need to like take it out and put it back into the mold or worry about the resin running off the sides when you top coat because it's got a built-in lip and I will show you that um, after it's demolded. I'll show you exactly what I mean if you're not sure what a built-in lip means because <laughs> it's yeah it's it's I think it's original of, of um took me a, a quite a while to work out how to do it and then to to do it so yeah I'm pretty proud of myself <laughs> for doing it because it always bothered me that when I used my crushed velvet inlays or inserts that um, you know I sometimes got a bit of overflow underneath and I just wanted to make it a little bit easier for you guys when you're using my molds so look about even I'm trying to get each one even the other one I think I might I'll I might do that different I might actually do a bit of a squiggle yeah I'll do a squiggle just so it's not so square <laughs> straight and regimented all right wipe this little stick off here we go with the purple and the purple can have a bigger space this time. Last time it only got a teensy little edge there. And it's a beautiful colour. And being a mica, you get that shimmer. You know, it's not a chameleon. It's not an interference. It's not going to change colour or do anything like that, which is fine. I mean, you can use those if you want to, but I just wanted to have a pastel. You can use your mica powders for dusting. You know, you don't have to just go out and buy specific mica powders like chameleons or interferences, things like that. You can just use the mica powders that you've got. You don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on doing all these other things. Okay. Actually, now that I've started, oh, look, I'll just keep going. You guys fast forward if you don't want to watch, okay? <laughs> I'm going to try to do a sort of like a an S shape, all right? Let's do that. I'll do that like that first. That way I've got a line to follow. <laughs> or you could just do like a little circle or, you know, like a blotch. You don't have to do any sort of pattern, I guess. But we'll just see what it looks like. Like this. You don't need a lot of colour because you'll just end up kind of blowing it all off anyway. So, yeah, you don't need a lot. feel like I want a bit more <laughs> of the purple. Okay. Alright, so that's that one done. Clean off my little brush. And now I'm going to do, what did I do? Another little, I'll just do that. It doesn't have to be the same kind of shape. I just want to do something a little bit more organic, okay? See how that looks. Oh gosh, look, the blue's gone over into the pink section. Oh no. Oh dear. But then I've got pink coming over this way, so it'll be okay. Won't it? We will make do. So get in there. Get in here. And to clean it, if you've got any bits of mica powder or resin or whatever stuck in the edge, you can just open it like that and get in there with um, a baby wipe. It's not difficult to do. Oh, look, I've missed out on some of my purple in there. I just noticed it when I did that. Look at that. Anyway, all right, moving on. That's those two done. Um, and now the pink. do again just a little bit of a sort of a I won't follow the exact shape I'll just do this I guess just so want to make sure we've got enough left for the yellow enough space left for the yellow get in there get in here And then what I will do, see all my loose powder here? I mean, you could leave it on if you want to, but in reality, that powder that's left is just going to float to the top. So I'll pick it up, I'll flip it over upside down into the bin and just let the mica powders 
go off into the bin. How's that looking so far? Which one are you liking so far? Gosh, that was a lot on there. The straight lines or the organic lines? What are your thoughts so far? And the blue seems to have a lot. It's, it's got more space than the others do. All right, so that's that done. Same but different. All right, um, I'm just going to flip them over into the bin. I'll mix up my resin. I'll be right back. Right, oh, so I have mixed up some Platinum 360 Plus resin, which is my resin of choice. And probably won't need it all, so <laughs> I'll have to find something else to do with it. But I did 100 grams of A and 43 grams of B. And I put two big scoops of Lorez Expressions White Satin pearlescent powder so white you could use whatever you want this is the background but because I want pastels uh, pastel colors I'm doing white um, and then you know when I do the um, chameleons I use black so this is going to be the back of the coasters and once they're set we can take them out and uh, I'll show you then what you do to the other side. We top coat them. So I'm just going to pour in there enough to go to the edges. I'm going to be really, if you're doing this, just be really careful that you're not scratching the um, your powders off because <laughs> you don't want to scratch the powders. Okay, It'll leave a mark. So just carefully. I'm not filling them up totally, totally because I want to be able to have room to go around with my little tool. See, there's a little bubble there already. I want to have enough room to go around with my little tool. It's just a silicon brush. This one's had the tip broken off, so it'll go, it'll, it's a little bit firmer. It's got lots of resin stuck to it. <laughs> it's a little bit firmer. Um, so, yeah, it should get into those little lip areas quite nicely. Um, but yeah, don't use don't use like a toothpick. It'll just scratch your mold. Something that's soft but yet firm because you want you want to be be able to get into the edges. So I've still got a little bit left in there. I'm going to start at the top and just push that down to the bottom so I can feel it on the base. And I'm going to slowly. There's no point going too fast, otherwise you'll just pull air back in there behind you. So we'll just go around slowly, pushing any air bubbles out if there are any, and then letting that resin just fall back in. Probably do this twice. And then back to the top. So that's that one done. I'll do the other one and then I'll come back to this one. See where the bubbles that have come up? So into that little groove there. All the way around. This is what I should have done with the chameleon one, but I, I thought if I did this I was going to rub off the colour, but I didn't. The colour stayed on. Right, so that's that done. Oh, go in there. In you go. Have you not got enough? In you go. So that was once. Let's torch. Get these bubbles away. I just fill this. I'm having so much trouble with my torch. It won't fill. And I've pushed in there to get the air out and all it does is have all this liquid in the bottom there. It's, oh. Anyway, maybe I just need it. Maybe it's time for a new torch. All right, let's go around again just to be on the safe side. Probably don't need to, but go around again. See, this is why you can't fill your mould too full the first time around because doing this makes it like a little wave in front of the stick and you don't want to push all your resin out of your coaster. Oops, I went a bit fast there and pushed it out. So there you go. It's not difficult to do um, and hopefully that will uh, stop any bubbles from forming. 
along the edges. Okay, so that's that done. I mean, you can also just, you know, do this with it, with the mould. Again, be careful you don't overflow it. But, um, yeah, see, you can see the bubbles coming out. Actually, I should just go slowly with this. <laughs> don't shake it too much. There we go. All right, so now um, that's done, and I will just fill this back up to the top. If by some chance you do get a bubble on the edge, it's not going to matter when we do, it'll, it'll be covered. It'll be hidden when we do the next layer. So don't be stressed about getting a bubble on, this, on, the, um, on the edges. It's not going to matter, okay? Be, don't stress about it. It's no big deal. I've gone, have I gone over? No. All right, so just look across the top. Make sure they're full. And that's it. There's another little bubbly boo popping up there. All right. So that's pretty much it for now. Um, oh, look, there's a tiny, tiny bit left. Not much at all. Not much at all. Actually, you know what I'll do? Hang on, just stay there. Hang on one sec. I'll just get my heart mould. I should just have it ready, shouldn't I? I should just have my little heart mould ready because it's, it's a great little mould for using up leftovers. Let's put, let's just put a tiny little bit of, whoops, <laughs> ah, a tiny little bit, that didn't work. Let's just put a little bit of pink in there. too much pink it is a pretty pink it certainly is bubblegum pink if I'd thought about it I could have halved it and put half in a little cup and half in left half in here and I could do half pink half yellow and then um, just fill just fill this. Cute little heart pendant. Puffy heart. It's got its own little built-in hanger here. Looks really pretty with a piece of leather. There we go. And that's it. All right. <laughs> I love how what the mica powder does. Pulls. You can see how it's pulling from the outside in. Resin just does that. All right, you guys. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow for the unmolding, and then we'll do the next step. So it's the next day. These have set. My little heart has set. So this was just the leftover resin. Oh, look how sweet it is. It's so cute. Just some leftovers. Better than wasting it, isn't it? Make a cute little gift for someone, a little girl, because it's pretty and pink. All right, let's see how these have gone. <laughs> Hopefully I did a good job of getting the resin to go down into those little channels there. I wonder what it would look like with different color, like instead of white, what it would look like with a different color. What do you think? Let me move this. This is done now. We don't need that anymore. Put these here. That was our inspiration piece. Okay. Are we ready? Let's do this one. Oh, look how pretty it is. And I go straight to the edges. Oh, look. Wow. Look, look, look. It is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. No issues there at all. It's nice and smooth. I've got no bubbles, so yay, 10 out of 10 for that one. And then this one. Let's have a look at the edge. Perfect. I run my finger around just so I can see it, feel if there's any bubbles. There's a tiny one just there. Can you, can you see that one? Oh. 
tiny little one just there. When we put the top coat in, because now with this lip around it, it's going to hold the clear resin for the top coat. Isn't that amazing? How easy is that? So if there's any little holes like that, um, the resin will just cover that. So it's not going to be an issue. And we've got the purple edge, the blue, the pink, the yellow. The pink looks a little bit more um, apricot. With this one, when I did this one, I put my, um, you know, the dark pink fluoro one on. And I didn't like it, so I washed it off. But there's still a little bit stayed on there. So that's why it looks a little bit darker. But yeah, I'm going to have to go and get myself um, a nice pale pink. I mean, it still looks nice. It just looks kind of a little bit more apricot. So there we go. Now uh, I am just going to go and mix up some resin for top coats. Probably only need an ounce in each, I'd say. Um, but my little measurements, and I've shown you this before. I'll show you again. This is my little, it's my little chart that I go by. Feel free to take a little snapshot of it. I'm using a two to one resin, and I look down here. It says part A, part B total. So I look down here. Um, two ounces would be like 36 grams. Or to be on the safe side, I might jump down to this one, 72 grams. So I do 50 grams of A, 22 grams of B. Because they are still quite deep in there and I want it to dome. So I think I'll do that one, 50 and 22. This is the one-to-one -one resin, that one there, part A, part B total. So if you think, okay, I need um, three, uh, what, I don't know, 200 grams-ish. So that's that one there, 190. I'd go 100 of A, 90 of, group of B. If you're doing them in a cup and you're looking at the measurements, it would be 100 mils to 100 mils but because a is heavier than b when you weigh that 100 mils you'll notice that a weighs more so that's why it's different okay there we go all right a little bit of hopefully useful information for you right i'm going to mix up my resin there we go so i ended up doing the 50 grams of a and 22 grams of b I always rather have a little bit more, um, you know, than I can do another one of these or, you know, better off having a little bit more than not enough and then you have to mix up more. So here we go. This is the best part. Pouring the clear on. And then your piece underneath just comes to life. So put a little bit on and wait for it to run to the edges. We don't want to put too much on to begin with and then it overflows so just be careful don't use it all up look I probably will use all that hey <clears throat> so before I added this top coat I weighed my my base pieces um, basically 60 grams so two ounces so if we are only doing one of these like that then I know I need 60 grams or two ounces in the black for the first coat and then um, what have I got there well I've got 72 grams so I can just divide that so basically 36 grams each so another another um, ounce another ounce off for the top so basically <clears throat> excuse me three ounces per per piece so I can just make a little note of that so that I know next time because I forget and I think, oh my God, how much resin do I make up? So this, see, it's pretty easy. You just push the resin with your stick towards the edge there. Don't go over. Just push it towards the edges. Make sure that you've covered the whole thing and then you can add a little bit more just to top it up. There we go. Now I can put a little bit more on because I can see a few little peaks still poking through. A little bit more. A little bit more. And then what I do is I stand back and look across the tops and then I can see if they're both equal. This one needs a little bit more. 
Um, and it actually domes, gets to the edge and it kind of makes a little curve over the edge there. See, this one had the tiny little hole there and you're not even going to see that. It's been covered. What's that? How is that now? Beautiful. I can actually take a little bit more on this one, a little bit more on that one. Have another look. This was, this was the perfect amount, you guys. Perfect. Look at that. Just the right amount of resin. So 60 grams and then 35. So 95 grams each. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now I can torch. I don't have to worry about melting any silicone because there isn't any there. So I'm just torching my top coat. Righto. Now, let me see if I can get you down so that you can have a little look. Get my glove off. Let's see if I can show you what I was looking at. Oh, there goes that ring light again. I'll give you a little idea. Anyway, there you go. Oh, gosh. It doesn't know what to focus on. There. Stand back a bit. How's that? You can see. Hopefully you can see. It's nice and shiny. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, there we go. Looks gorgeous. All right, so that's it. Um, so basically there's nothing to unmold. Uh, so I will finish the video here because you don't need to see the unmolding because we've already done it. <laughs> it won't be any different. All right, so we just need to let them dry now and they'll be good. <clears throat> now the other thing you can do, when you do your black, you can just use normal resin. And then when you come to do your top coat, if you wanted to, that's when you could do your heat resistant layer. So you just spend a little bit more on your heat resistant resin and that can go on the top. So yeah, cheaper resin for the back, for the black. And then just a... a Heat resistant top layer there you go all right hope you've enjoyed that video hope you've learned something and uh, yeah check out this video uh, check out the video. <laughs> check out the mold it's in my eBay store if you want one all right thank you so much for watching take care bye for now